Hi there, it's me, the Hipster King from the Hairy Game Lords, and we're here today with an unboxing of this one. Crimes in History, H.H. H. Holmes' Murder Castle. Now, for those of you that um, know a little bit about the history of this one, H.H. H. Holmes' character in history is from the, so I think of the 1890s around there. Uh, a pretty horrendous case. Um, got himself a fair bit of money through, through some kind of nefarious means and then was building this, what they call this castle, where basically you've got a whole load of different traps, acid baths and pretty horrible things. And then he was selling off the skeletons into medical things to make his fortune. So a pretty horrendous story of this pretty nasty guy. And why wouldn't that make an absolutely brilliant theme for a game? So we've been sent this uh, through from B, uh, BGC Games. And I'm going to start with just an unboxing. This is finished on Kickstarter and is being filled shortly. Um, and so we're just going to have a look at what's inside the box. And then very shortly, we'll also be getting out a review of this one to get an idea of how it plays. So first of all, lovely kind of that. I just love the artwork on this one already. Just a really, just beautifully done artwork. This also includes uh, the second story expansion, which allows um, one to seven players to play. So this is the castle. On the back, just gives you a little bit of what the game looks like. You've got the Ferris wheel, because it was in the time of history when that first Ferris wheel was being built. And this is where the, um, the cubes that you're going to be taking to gather evidence, each one of these is a piece of evidence. And the aim of the game in this one is that you're going to gather enough evidence to then um, beat your opponents to snitching on homes to the um, police. Because all of the players in the game are playing characters who worked with homes but weren't aware of what he was doing. Um, and then you, you otherwise, if you don't manage to get the evidence and snitch on him, you will suffer a similar fate to him in terms of at the hands of the police. So your job is to move around this castle gathering evidence. So it, um, a lot of the reviews when it was on Kickstarter were talking about it, having an element of the sort of um, developing the floor plan in a similar way to you do in uh, the trail um, at the Mansion on the Hill, that type of game. But then there's a whole load of other little mechanics in there and there's a really nice follow-on mechanic with the action. So you take an action and everybody else gets to take that action. But if you pick that action first, you're going to have um, an extra bonus action. So lovely game. So let's get right inside there now and see what is in the box. So first, nice little advert. Saw this one on Kickstarter as well. So they've done a jigsaw puzzle based on the same kind of artwork by the same artist. Um, and then we have our rule book. Quite so you've got small size for rule books. It's not like fills the full box, but it looks like there's quite a lot. So you've got your standard overview, telling you the story of the game, telling you all the content so you can check that you've got everything when it arrives. General setup, nice big pictures, not a huge, and then just clearly going through. I think that's a nice amount of text against the pictures. So you know what you're doing, examples of uh, and clarifications on the different cards, what they do. Working through who your different character are, characters are. And then it's got the second story, which is um, some of the additional rooms, what they do. They've got a solo player mode, you've got the auto, um, and how the auto will work. Um, you can also look at it, players homes as well. So goes through all the different methods of play there, so you know what you're doing. Nicely done, rule book, nicely clearly set out. Then we'll get into the body of the game. So you start with the punch board, showing you here um, the various different rooms that you're going to come across as you move around the castle and you build that castle. Take a look at it that way so you can try and see. So good, kind of looks like good two mil board. Artwork, really, really nice on these cards, punching nice and easily. So a couple of close ups. A few of those different rooms. The basement is where um, home starts. So you can see his footprints there in the basement. 
I like this one actually, that's a nice looking room. Beautiful, the, the way that's designed, the maze there. So going, I'll stop punching this out. There is something to it, isn't it? I love punching games, um, punching games out. It's one of, talking to a friend this morning about how I, um, it's one of the best bits I find of getting that game, that new cardboard smell as you punch it out. So whole load of um, different rooms that you can get. And also there are these brick tiles because in the castle itself, when it was built, some of the doors opened straight onto bricks. Some opened into traps and various other bits, but it's one way of blocking uh, progress in the game or keeping yourself safe, those brick tiles. So you've got that, you've then got even more uh, of those broom tiles. Then we've got now some, um, we've got the, these I think are the six uh, action or six or seven action slots that are available. So on your turn, you're going to pick one of these actions. You do that action. If you're the first person, you get the selection bonus, which is written here. So for example, if it's move, you get to move one room. But if you choose this, you get to move the Ferris wheel by one position clockwise. So you're able to start moving it around to either block your opponents or get what you need in terms of your evidence cubes out into a room near you. So every time you take an action, everybody gets to take that action but whoever picks the action gets to have the selection bonus. Um, I think this is uh, the man himself. Little standee there. And he's going to chase you around. And if he, if he does, uh, if Holmes gets hold of you, you end up taking a, cu a cube that fills when he prevents you basically from getting as much evidence or makes carrying evidence more and more difficult. There are ways to kind of, there are cards in the game that allow you to get away from him, protect you from him a little bit, but uh, keeping out of his way when he moves at the end of your turn is also important. More tokens and uh, various other bits, got some nice toilet or uh, bathrooms uh, there. And uh, I think these are other little tokens that will make more sense as you get in through the game. I like these ones I heard about these. These are the bookcase tokens. You can use these to enable you to move through rooms that wouldn't always be connected. So it's like the secret passageways. There are also traps that you can set to within the house to stop your opponents getting through. Now there is, you'll see here on that board, there were the player standees on the bottom, but I love this, and in fact, I will show you the insert in a minute when I get to there. Uh, but we have got character minis for all of the characters that are available in games. So we're going to look forward to getting those sprayed and painted up shortly and added to the game. More tokens and some of these bonus things that come out at a certain point. So if you're in the laboratory, you get access to the laboratory shelf and some other bits during the game that add to the game. We then have some of the player boards. This is Holmes' own control panel. He noticed dual layer board, so you can put the cubes in there and they're not going to slide about. Even more tokens. For the different parts of the game, they, they go with the lab. You've got various uh, and, and locked rooms because you lock the rooms as you as you um, putting them out. Even more stuff to go between here, um, different floors and things. Then we have the individual player boards. Really solid card there. Got a bit of a bend, so they might need a little bit of a flatten out. That often happens with particular dual layer boards. The dual layer board there, so you've got your uh, different places where you collect your evidence. And here is where, when we mentioned if Holmes gets you, you get the home strikes cube there that basically takes points off you and makes carrying and collecting all the evidence you need to win the game more difficult. So you've got all the different characters. Um, each of the characters have got their own player powers. Um, and that's what these, the spaces for tokens that we'd seen earlier go on there when you you were able to use that once in the game. So there are your six different player boards. Good solid um, dual board there. And we've got the Ferris wheel that we talked about. This was, uh, home was, uh, was around the time of the World Fair where they had the world's first Ferris wheel. And so that will move around and it will move your um, 
the evidence and as you put out a new room whatever evidence is there is taken and placed in so there's planning when and where to place rooms and when your opponents are going to be able to place rooms and get hold of the different coloured evidence cubes they need is a really important part of the game. We've got our little printed bag where all your cubes are going to go so that you can draw your cubes randomly. We have got a whole load of different coloured cubes and I'm already, I'm smiling at these because I do like those kind of those translucent cubes, they look really nice, all the different colours rather than just being solid. I just think it makes it look that little bit nicer when they are the translucent ones. So all the different cubes there that you've got. And I think them. We've got all those to come out nearly there at the bottom of this box. Then we've got, I think they're the ones for homes. Another, we've got fake evidence there, which goes in that one, which will block spaces. A couple of little bits there. We've got obviously the holders for the standees, but I know I'm going to be painting up those minis and using those minis. But if you, put, I know some people do prefer standees, so you've got the options of those if you want them. This is the um, this is the movement deck I think for Holmes. So at the end of each of your turn, once the sort of at the end of the round, Holmes has got his own deck, and this will decide whether he moves. So you've got him kind of about to come in, I don't know if you can try and get that in focus. He's there, I don't know if you can see that very well, he's there with a, ready to bring down some pain on somebody there. And there are different things. So this one, plant 10 pieces of fake evidence, destroy all pieces of evidence, move up to two rooms and lock two unexplored rooms. So all of these things are gonna affect how, um, how uh, homes works around the building itself and what, what you're able to do and it'll have an impact on you on your turn and then find two last things to look at we've got decks of cards now two big decks of cards let's have a look at the cards first when we get into this one let's open it up so these the top cards here are we've got some safe cards, I think, which is, we've got the different colours on, the different types of evidence. Ah, oh, no, this is Holmes's moving one. We've got Holmes's moving deck here, where it allows you to move Holmes to different rooms. So this one, you're going to move Holmes to the laboratory. And it tells you which no room number to go. And basically, whoever's the first player decides whereabouts in that room is going to go to. Holmes on the move here, he can move to the secret room or the laboratory. And again, as we've said, whoever's got first player will decide on that. And then horrendous ones like Holmes goes on a rampage and he's going to pick a whole load of cards. Um, then we've got, you've got those action cards that we showed you earlier here. Able to, um, you've got various other cards here that this one will um, permanently remove a Holmes action card from the game. So. You've got all these different cards, different sets of cards. I'm just going to try and pull those together. Uh, and one last deck of cards to get through. I do so like it when they put the, uh, the easy open bits on these decks. It makes unboxing a lot easier. Really looking forward to seeing. I've watched a few of the previews and read through a bit of the stuff on the uh, Kickstarter page, uh, but looking forward to getting this one properly to the table. Um, Back to these cards, again, fitting really well with the whole slightly dark and uh, macabre theme. There's the man himself. That's a whole load more of those um, Holmes movement deck. Here you've got um, various pieces of evidence and numbers of evidence on this one. What else have we got? You've got your, here are the main characters. This is your overview card telling you what you can do on your turn. So you've got your kind of just your overview so people know what they're doing. Always helpful to have those in hand. And then you've got these effect, these various effects cards. They've got the murder castle picture on the back. And these have got various things that you can do. So 
Well, this is gas fixtures. Welcome to my perfect castle. Home activates the gas fixtures for every room in the castle and all players are knocked unconscious. Every player must discard one of their event cards. So you've got all of these uh, kind of event cards. Some of them will be positive, some of them will be negative. Um, big stack of those. Card stock on these is really, is nice. It's not too, you know, they're, they're not ridiculously thick, but it's a good quality card in there. Um, and the, the artwork on them are really, lots of really neat little pictures, plus your text explaining what your cards do. And the final thing in the box is this. This could have been made from card, but now it's a solid metal key, which is the kind of first player marker. For, so each round that will move around, so you know who's first player. And just to show you there, we've got, so your cards go in here. You've got your um, all your um, space for all your tiles, your character cards, um, the various different tokens for evidence and the board game and everything will fit nicely in there. So I cannot wait to get this played. And obviously you can see there the slot for all the miniatures. So HH Holmes Murder Castle, looking good, really good components. And uh, there'll be a Harry Game Awards review coming shortly. If you like what we're doing, you want to see the review, make sure you like and subscribe and we will catch you soon.